Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video with the Mojave 4S. If you've watched one of my last videos, I'm not sure how many ago it was, I'll link it into the description. I installed telemetry on the truck. So between the radio link transmitter and the radio link receiver, I installed this little wire right here. It's just a JST connector soldered into my ESC IC5 connector, plug it into the receiver and you get real time telemetry. Now, I have changed one thing since then. So I'm just gonna fire this up. So you can see right now on the radio, I'll bring it in a little bit closer. You can see right there, 20.7 volts. That's reading, again, the ESC and the battery. So right now, because I run this truck in 5S, and again, I've covered this in many videos, but I'll quickly cover it in this one too. There's no LVC on the ESC because the ESC does not read the voltage at 5S. So what I've done, and I'm going to show you guys right now, you go into the menu. Now, if this is a little bit blurry, sorry about that, guys. You go into the alarm and you can see right now i've got the transmitter is just default set to 7.2 that's because you can install a lipo into this transmitter i think anywhere from a 2 to a 4s and because you can install a 4s you could set this alarm to whatever you need so between a 2s and 4s whatever you want your low voltage to be you can change that now i know i've got some humming from the truck so i'm going to try to do this quickly you can see right here ext i've got it set to 16 volts that means that my alarm will go off when the ESC starts to read 16 volts. I'm going to show you guys right now how this is going to work. So if I go to here and let's say I just, I'm going to rank this way up to like 21 volts because that's above what my battery is right now. So if I had set this right now to 21 volts, so kind of imagine that this is set to that 16 volts so that we can kind of get an indication of what's going to happen when the battery drops to that voltage. So you can see right there, you got EXT, low power, transmitters making a noise. It's telling you right now that it's reached that voltage. Now we don't need it there. You can also see in here, because this would be the screen, it's flashing right there as well. What we're gonna do, because that's driving me nuts, go back into alarm. We're gonna lower this to 16 volts. Now what that means is at 16 volts, that brings each cell to 3.2 volts. 3.2 times five will equal 16 volts. That is pretty low. You're not giving a lot of room for the cells to hopefully discharge properly. Like they're discharging somewhat kind of equally, but we'll kind of, we'll still monitor it. I'll still be able to see the voltage. I can bring a LiPo checker with me, plug it in, see where I'm at, just to see how this battery is doing. I had, I think, initially set it to 16.5. I may end up doing that again. I don't know. But either way, guys, we are patiently waiting for the sun to come up. I can kind of see a nice pinkish glow out there, which means I think it's going to be a nice day. We've got Mojave 4S going out. We've got the Big Rock first time on the stock tires over there. That's going to be the first time I've ever ran the stock tires. And also, guys, I've got the Kagama coming out with me as well today. So it should be a good day. But either way, guys, let's get out and run this thing. All right, guys, so we're up in my work. I actually just got finished running the big rock and as you can see oops yeah that sucks but whatever now it's good for the winter mojave for us it's been good for the winter for a while that body's pretty much you know it's funny it looks great from a distance it's just literally falling apart it's cracked everywhere how this truck holds up i have no idea Yeah, parking lots are super dirty because they've been sanded because of the snow and all that kind of stuff. So she's gonna slide all over the place, but we're still gonna have some fun. Loving the 6 Ace Mojave tires on this thing. Not sure how they're gonna like this little hump. Eh, not too bad. All right. Let's try to jump with these tires. I had it out a little while ago. Whoa! 
Did you guys see that? That was... Uh oh, oh, that's, we know what that is. So we're gonna have to watch the jumping because that body is not gonna like it as I line up another one. Okay, we're going to bring the jump ahead. No super big fire jumps today. I don't feel like having to fix the body all run. That should be good. You know what, before we break it, just run it around for a bit. Man, these method tires work pretty well in the snow. I shouldn't say pretty well, they work great. You would think they wouldn't work at all. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, what a monster. It's too bad, guys. I know it looks really nice right now, and I came out when it was still kind of early with the big rock and it was pretty cold, but this day is gonna change. It's gonna stay mild, but it's gonna start to rain. So that's why I kind of came out early and Better than it was when I first got here with the big rock. All right, let's try to jump. Okay, you guys must see how the control, how much more control I have now over this thing, running the 5S and these tires. Fairly simple corrections. See the old Casey RC bash bar there? <laughs> yeah. Nice. When I was under with the big rock, I was wondering how this little hump where the snowplow went by, how that would be, but it's working out pretty good. It's like a nice little cushion when I land. Well, so the thing is guys, I'm assuming most of you will probably know, <laughs> to fit these tires, you gotta trim the body. And not everybody's gonna wanna do that. But they are a much, I don't wanna say needed, because needed would be the wrong word. But they are definitely a very nice improvement, guys, over running the stock tires. Just for control, that's all. Okay, that was horrible. on your belly. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, this thing is a monster. Probably almost could have tried to do a front flip there to recover, but oh well. We're stuck. I was debating whether or not I'm going to buy a clear body to replace this one, buy a complete body and cage off Jenny's and buy a clear body to replace this one. Or just buy, I don't know, everybody. <laughs> oh geez. I do like this, this combo, this body, this color combination. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. Looking down guys, we're sitting at 18.8 volts. Hopefully you guys can see that right there. Don't know if you got too much glare or not, but it's nice to be able to look down and see that. <laughs> and if I remember, as soon as we get home, when we got the truck on the bench and we clean it up and all that kind of fun stuff, we'll plug in the, uh, uh oh, that's new. Oh no, I think that's the body again. Because that sounds like tires. Yeah, that's the body again. Um, we'll check the, the uh, battery, see how it did, like how evenly it discharged and all that kind of stuff. Because again, I think I set it to 16 volts. I had it at 16, had it at 16.5 and then changed it to 16. But that's awesome. Again, guys, that's all on a radio that in Canada, I think is around 90 to 100 bucks, depending on sale and all that kind of stuff. In the States, it's 70-ish uh, maybe, I don't even know. And a receiver that you can pick up for, again, guys, I think it's 27 bucks, 28 bucks Canadian. <laughs> this thing is, guys, an absolute animal. I was like full throttle trying to keep it there. Jeez.
Ooh, that sounded rough. This thing is just a beast. It's kind of a bad truck to drive first when you come out with a bunch of trucks because and it's why now I always drive it like last because if you drive this thing first, you're going to break whatever you're driving next. Because this thing is just unstoppable. Like you just get to the point where you just keep pinning it, pinning it, and you don't even care. You're just trying to point it in the direction you want it to go and that's it. Okay, that I didn't mean to do. <laughs> Crowleys. Oh, that was fun. Put in the old KCRC bash bar to a test there. Nothing like coming down flat on pavement with a plastic chassis truck. Okay, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> Thing at 18 volts, guys. That's a nice landing. There, that's not so bad. We hit 16 volts guys, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna pack this up, because that is, if the cells were discharging properly, each cell would be at 3.2 volts. So, again guys, I'll see you back on the bench, and we'll check out this battery. All right guys, we've got the truck home, it's back on the bench, it's all cleaned up, and we've got quite a bit to cover after that run today, because a lot of things happened, and I'm proud to say that I have finally broken this truck. And I know that might sound odd. Why would I be proud that I broke a truck? That's because this thing has been an absolute beast. And it 
now I can I can honestly say, guys, this thing ranks up, I think, maybe even within the top three RCs, period. It has been an absolute machine, and it broke because of the conditions. It broke because of there was a couple of landings you saw where I came down hard on the pavement. The chassis itself is still together, but anyways, we're going to cover that later, guys. First things first, though, we're going to get into the LiPo battery, the 5S, the LVC, the telemetry, all that kind of fun stuff. So the battery is showing around 17.6 volts. The lowest cell was around 3.4 something. The highest was 3.5 something. Now, 17.6 is quite a bit higher than the 16 volts that we set the transmitter to. But I do know, and I mean, I'm not super knowledgeable in this area, but your battery, when you start gunning it, it's, it's going to kind of draw. It doesn't necessarily like completely empty type thing. So when you're pulling the trigger, you're kind of drawing from the battery, but then when you let off, it your cells might go up a little bit. I've seen it in other videos, and again, I'm not the one to explain it, so I'm not even going to try. Uh, so I'm thinking that at one point, just the way the load was on, it may have hit that 16 volts. Being that the lowest cell was 3.4, I would be comfortable now lowering that alarm a little bit too. Just, I, th I think would be okay. So I'll take it down a little bit, and then again, just keep kind of monitoring it. But overall, it was nice to have that telemetry. It was nice to have the alarm. It was nice to know, hey, I can get in a good run, get home. Because a lot of times when I've driven this truck with the 5S, without LVC, I came home and my cells were like 3.9, 3.8. So I still had a little bit of fun, you know, left in them sort of thing. But obviously, I didn't want to risk it. Now, Method RC belted tires. Those on this truck are sort of a game changer. I actually think the tires made more of an improvement than going to 5s i think having they're a little bit taller so i did bring out a stock tire so you guys can see they are a little bit taller so again that's kind of like having taller gearing but yet even though it, it did add more speed it didn't really affect anything on the acceleration if anything it actually performed better and having that little bit more weight on each four corner i also found kind of helped in the air so i don't know now if i had run this truck on these tires I may have stuck with 4S because a few people have asked me, and even myself, guys, right now, I don't really know how much of an improvement 5S has been on this truck. 5S on a lot of trucks in the past, Traxxas Max, uh, Erevo Brushless, all those kind of fun things. It was a really nice improvement. Now, given my conditions where I have a lack of traction, that may also add to it. So that's why I haven't really come out and said anything yet because until I get out and can run this truck, you know, in milder weather and get put down that power, get traction. It's really hard to say if 5S was a much needed improvement when again, I can't get the power down. So we'll wait and see guys, once the spring hits and fun stuff like that, we'll be able to start tweaking this truck a little bit more. Maybe pull that center diff, thicken up the fluid, we'll see. But the tires themselves, and you, if you didn't watch the last video where I ran this truck, it was an awful day, it was super cold, super windy, but it was the first run with the Method tires you really got to see how this truck drove with them, even in the snow. And it's surprising because these tires don't have big, deep treads on them, but they actually performed really, really well. Whether you want to trim your body, that's where it's going to be kind of a eh. Because I don't really know if you would have need to remove this much of the body to fit these tires. I had to, I originally guys did this for the MX-28s and because they stuck out quite a bit. So I'm not too sure, but they are they are taller. So I would say you're probably going to have to at least do something over there. Now that I've ran them, I think I said in one video with the MX-28s that I would not have chopped up the body. Even though, guys, my body was in really rough shape, I would not chop up a body to fit the MX-28s. However, I actually, guys, think I would to fit these tires. They were that much of a difference. The air control is a huge improvement. They handle better. And again, even just being that they're a little bit taller, the truck itself is a little bit faster. I'm all for it. I think that the these tires, guys, are an improvement. It would be nice if Method made a belted tire like this for the Mojave Forest. So be it a little bit smaller, but still have that little bit of extra weight, have the, belted, the belts in them and all that kind of fun stuff. But we'll see how that goes. Now, moving on to what did we do to the truck? Because I was so proud to say that I broke it. I say that, guys, because... I have been driving this truck in pretty much the worst conditions. We go on and we see, you know, the guys that do the high flying and all that kind of stuff. Hey, that's great. But running this truck in cold temperatures, a plastic chassis truck in cold conditions is not great. 
And that's pretty much all this truck has ever seen. It's been zero, plus one, minus one, minus two, minus five. And this truck has always taken it. And there was a couple of jumps that I did see where I was like, ooh, that's really, really bad. And I didn't even notice that I had broken the truck until I was done the video and I was walking to pick it up. And when I had looked at the back of the truck, now I've kind of fixed part of it, but you guys can see here, this skid here was actually like all pushed up so that you could see like the hinge pin carrier and all that kind of stuff. So I broke this skid right here. You can see it's broke. So chassis itself, guys, still good, still solid. The KCRC skid plate has done its job. However, back here, this is, when you really look at it, this is an extremely weak point for this truck because it's two pieces. You have this skid, this piece right here, and then you have the actual rear skid. Hopefully I can kind of get you guys in there to see that. But then you have the this rear skid, which connects to your wheelie bar and all that stuff. So you have this piece, but then you have this piece. This is one of those things where if this had been one piece, sort of like the, I think it's the Mojave and the fire team and stuff like that, I think have one piece that kind of comes down into the chassis. Um, I, I obviously, I understand that that's a metal chassis and it's, it's one solid piece back here, but I just mean if this here was all one piece, a nice composite plastic, this I think would be greatly improved. I think you're going to see this piece break on a lot of trucks because any bad landing back here, even any landing at all guys, where you're getting, you know, full kind of suspension compressed and stuff like that, that's going to be a hard hit, but that's it guys. Also not really broken, but you can see my front skid from kind of a couple of those landings on the pavement really wore down and it looks a little bit ugly. I ended up picking up new skid plates and I wasn't paying attention. So I ordered the skid plates came back down later and then realized that this is what actually mainly broke. So I still have to get this part. I kind of went through the chop shops. Jenny's RC has kind of a complete plastic package, but it's like, it's going to cost me 70 bucks to get everything here in Canada. So I'll probably just wait till I can order this piece. But guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know the ending was a little bit long, but I just wanted to go over everything. And again, I, I could not stress this enough, guys. This thing, the Mojave 4S, is an absolute monster it's outlived the big rock which is behind me in a lot of pieces right now this truck just keeps taking it and uh, yeah we're, we're gonna have an issue in the back there where the skid and the rear skid those two pieces right there kind of connect that's gonna be kind of a problem for this truck you know the weird thing with the Mojave is that at the end of the day it's a short course slash desert racer whatever you want to call it type truck and it was never really meant to be kind of the hardcore jumping bashing truck which i have done with it since i've got it and obviously guys i feel like i have paid the price i've destroyed my body i've broke now a few parts on it but it just does that so well it is so much fun to watch this truck in the air it looks so freaking good yet when you get it down on the ground it handles amazing it's just a very enjoyable truck i think i said in one video that this was what a slash 4x4 always should have been and it's the truth. You Everybody bought a slash 4x4. It broke nonstop. You fixed it. You put more parts into it, whatever. This thing, guys, yeah, we've got the KCRC parts. We've added a different ESC. But like I mentioned, I really am wondering now that if I had just stuck with these tires, if I would used these tires earlier on, if I would have been happy with the stock 4S setup. We'll see. We're, we've got lots of guys to do with this truck. We've got some fixing now to do with it. I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do for a body. If I'm going to pick up a clear one or pick up another painted one, who knows. But... At the time that I'm recording this video, guys, oh, it's a good freaking day. There is something that is being delivered today that I am so pumped for. Two years in the making, that's kind of a hint. If you look back at what was released two years ago, you might know what it is. But either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video because I sure did. And as always, if you did, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe and have a great day.